capsules to for the gunpowder. With I had a gun on me, I could fill up the the shot, and bang. <laughs> bang a <or> one shot. <laughs> the castle we're walking towards now is like a monolith rising out of the desert. Hey everyone, we're Hannah and Johnny. For the past three years, we've been exploring in our self-built camper van. After loving life on the road, we realised it was time to find a place that feels like home, a perfect base for our adventures. With new adventures on the horizon, we're excited to see where this next chapter takes us. Join us each week as we continue to find new adventures. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Finding Our Adventure in Jordan. Today we've woken up at Azrak Lodge, which is where we stayed last night, and we have got an adventure pack day again. We're just about to go and head to have breakfast, and then after that we're going to be heading to Azrak Nature Reserve. We've just come inside and we are having a traditional Jordanian breakfast and we've got a lot of different selection of things that we're going to try out. We are just on our way to head to the car to head to the reserve now. It's, an, it's about 9am this morning and it's already 30 degrees. It's supposed to get up to about 40 degrees today and over the next few days it's supposed to get into the mid 40s. So we're making our plans for our hikes and stuff for the next few days to get up early and to leave before the sun really gets hot because it's just going to be almost unbearable. Um, but luckily we've got some amazing adventures planned and we're really excited for today as well. We have just made it to the Azraq wetlands and the, what's left in surviving of the wetlands at the moment is only 10% of what used to be here. They used to pump the water from the wetlands to Amman to use as drinking water and it was just rapidly decreasing what was remaining of the reserve in the wetlands so they now pump, um, as you can see behind me, they now pump from the Ministry of Water in Jordan water back into the wetlands but they can only pump enough water, about 2 million um, litres of water a year I think to create about 10% of the wetlands so we're going to have a little walk around now and discover what the area is like. They've built this beautiful boardwalk raised up above the water so you can walk around, really get into the wetlands and really discover the wildlife and animals that live here. This part of the reserve that we're walking on now used to be completely covered in water back in the 1960s and our guide was saying that if we were walking here now we'd be completely underwater and the loss of water has caused lots of death of wildlife and plant loss um, and it's just turned into a very arid, deserty kind of landscape now. So we're just walking along this wall at the moment and they think it comes from the Roman times and it was actually initially built to divide the not so clean water from the clean water. We've just come across one of the other lakes now in the reserve and the water used to pretty much come from the ground, like underground springs and it rainfall that would fill those underground springs up. But with the pumping of the water to the city, um, it's just dried up and there's not enough water now coming from underground to, to fill the lakes back up. So that's why they have to supplement it with the water from the government. So that's why they can only fill about 10% of the lakes back up and the wet, wetlands is much smaller than it used to be. <laughs> High fives. If you do high fives, you go. So we're just in like a wildlife hide where you can watch over the um, wetlands and we've just spotted some buffalo and they're just getting a little bit closer to the water.
we've just pulled ourselves away from the bird watching hide and we were absolutely spoiled the amount of wildlife that we just saw. We saw the water buffalo who came right out to the lake and a couple of them actually went in the water. There was a few that had a few little baby water buffalo. We also saw a snake. We saw um, some big birds as well, lots of different types of birds, swallows, smaller birds as well. Um, so yeah, we've had to pull ourselves away because there's still a lot more to see of the nature reserve. So we were just taken to the water buffalo just now and it was amazing we just saw the whole herd of them they'd just been in the water and they came out and then they just started running across the road so we've just finished walking around Azrak Lodge and we've just driven a little bit further and we're going to be having lunch with a local Chechen family and we're going to learn a little bit about um, their traditions and learn all about them. So they're one of the groups of people that actually moved to Jordan a long time ago and we're excited to learn a bit more about them. Um, the head of the Chechens, um, he gave this um, um, sword. This is handmade. handmade, silver, and it's uh, 500 years old. Um, and this is a new gift that was given by the head of the Chechens to Khadija's daughter. وهاي إذا ما بصيرش نفتحها إذا فتحتها لازم تنزل دم ممنوع الرجل يفتح هذا السيف هذا من قوانينه. Okay, so the man he cannot open this. Um, if he opened it, then he has to kill something with it. You know, so it's like in the traditions that this is something that you have, you wear, you put on you, but you don't use unless you want to. Kill something with it exactly as a protection, as a weapon. Oh. <laughs> Okay, stay okay. Like, like this, but look at me. Three, two, uh, say Jamid. Jamid. Cheese. Jamid. Jamid. Cheese. 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 لا تصوير حلو. نعم. لا لا لا. خلاص. هذا هو. 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 هذا هو.
castle we're walking towards now is like a monolith rising out of the desert and it's kind of camouflaged because it fits in with the desert colours and it looks incredible and it's just getting bigger and bigger as we get closer to it. There's a bit of a debate of what this building was originally used for but they believe that it could have been built by the Crusaders as a bit of a hotel kind of complex for the caravans that were crossing the desert and you can clearly see inside there's lots of different rooms that could have been used and a lot of um, places to store and shelter from when crossing the desert because it is really hot so you would have need that shelter. So just from the outside of the building you can really see how it was built and the structure and even just the detail of um, the patterns of how they've put the stones and it's beautiful there's kind of like these arrow shaped um, kind of I, I don't know if they're windows but they're kind of like indented in uh, but it's absolutely beautiful building and just surrounded by desert it's very very hot at the moment so I think we're gonna go and find some shade. We've just driven about five minutes down the road from the big castle and we've come to another castle which is a little bit smaller but apparently it's much more beautiful inside. Apparently there's the paintings and artwork is still visible and so we're just walking across the path now to head towards it. So this particular castle was built in 743 AD by an Islamic caliphate and apparently it's one of the most important um, monuments of early Islamic um, architecture and artwork and so we're really excited to get in because we can't wait to see what it's like. What an incredible, fascinating building. The early Islamic art, I've never seen anything like it because typically in my view of what Islamic art is, is, is text and, and scribing things rather than the human form because my understanding is in Islamic art, you're not supposed to um, recreate what God created. But this is an example of how early um, Islamic art is beautiful. It's humans, it's animals, it's showing stories and also a lot of nudity as well, which quite surprised me. Um, and I'm surprised that it's still here and not been damaged by people being embarrassed by it. But it's an incredibly beautiful building, incredibly historic and, and full of very um, amazing stories. We've just got back from exploring the beautiful castles in the desert and we've come back to our lovely cool room at Azrak Lodge and we thought we'd just quickly show you around the room that we're staying in at the moment. So the room that we're staying in has got a lovely big comfortable bed. There's also like a seating area here full of all of our bags and stuff and then there's floor to ceiling windows which makes the most of the view and this very own balcony which is really nice there's lots of cacti and uh, yeah it's very like desert landscape here and then we'll show you back inside and this is the bathroom we've got toilet a sink and also a shower so this lodge is actually run by RSCN, which it stands for the Royal Society of Conservation and Nature for Jordan, which um, they actually manage the Azraq Nature Reserve, which we visited earlier, and a few other places as well around Jordan. So this is one of their places that they are in charge of. Oh, sorry, there's a cute little kitten down there. Look. Um, and yeah, so they're doing really good things um, for nature in Jordan and trying to kind of like rewild and conserve it and also educate people on all of the work that they're doing there. So yeah, I definitely recommend coming and staying here. It's a great experience. Very nice lodge as well, like really, really nicely done. Um, yeah. <laughs> Alla Rasi, Alla Rasi, Akhui. 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 Alla Rasi, Akhui.
we have just come out to Azraq Castle for sunset and it's absolutely incredible. We've just come through the gates, they've let us in probably after hours, I think it was closed, but we've been lucky. And these doors coming into the castle, and it's actually a fortress this one is, these doors are made out of stone granites, they're between one to two tons, and they work just by having this bit um, chiseled out so it's like a hinge down below and up above and they're so heavy it takes a lot of work to pull them but considering how heavy these doors are in the stone to actually move them is incredible incredibly light really but it's absolutely amazing you can see up there the it's smoothing like circular so it can turn and down here it almost looks like it's got um, oil in it because it's just the stone that's moving Also here they found something that I'll show you. Um. We've just driven to a Nabataean fort and we're on top of this hill. It's absolutely beautiful. The sun is setting just behind us here and to the north we have Syria, the east we have Iraq and the south we have Saudi Arabia. It's an absolutely beautiful warm evening and I think we're going to leave that episode here today and we'll catch you guys in the morning.